Hey everybody, it's Harry from Slap Daddy Barbecue. Today's episode is really not going to be about cooking barbecue in my backyard. I'm in beautiful Tamales Bay, north of San Francisco. I'm going to be heading out with my buddy Tam. Tam is one of my Patreons as well as one of my YouTube subscribers. And uh, after watching my videos, he asked me, Hey Harry, it's clam season and the tide's going to be out today. You want to come join me near San Francisco? Go catch some clams or dig for some clams. So today I'm here for a barbecue adventure. Maybe with some barbecue clams later but we're here in the beautiful sheltered tamales bay we're gonna head out during the low tide which is about like a minus 1.6 and see if we can get some gooey duck some uh, clams and have a day of adventure foraging for our lunch in the tamales bay north of san francisco <laughs> That's a big one. That's a big one? Okay. Yeah. So normally we would... So you mark the spot, right? We would mark the spot. But let's go ahead and get the... This is a shell of a Pacific Gaper. Pacific uh, Gaper. Pacific okay. Gaper. So there's two types. Yeah. This one's a little bit more elongated. And then there's what's called a Fat Gaper. I mean, I used to remember in the Fat Gaper. So Pacific Gaper, a little elongated. Fat Gaper is just almost round like a football. Football. So all those holes, there's some living creature in there. A worm. It could have a clam, it could have any multitude of types of clams, or it could have even ghost shrimps are out here. Ooh, here we go. So anytime you see any of these little clumps of yeah, like this one here? Uh, seaweed, yeah. usually there is a clam yeah, right there. Right? And this one, if you just poke the stick down, you can actually see how far down he is. So, and he's retracting his siphon down. So the siphon is the one that comes out of the shell and sticks up above Correct. the ground, right? Correct. So this That's guy, about another about foot? foot. So 18, he's about 18, inch, 18 inches. 18 inches, but his his siphon is about once fully retracted about okay. another six inches above his shell okay so technically this guy's almost two feet deep roughly wow so he's gonna be a, a long uh, uh, a dig a little bit of a dig so what, the, what's the purpose of the tube so that when you excavate the sand out it doesn't the sand okay. on the outside doesn't collapse in and it covers the whole okay. this, this is a what this is a 10 10, ten yeah because i i'm lazy i don't want to move a lot of excavate a lot of <laughs> sand so i buy the smaller tube and basically you just walk it down now the clam cannot go anywhere, obviously, right? He's, of course, he's stuck, no, he's, he's stuck, right? He's stuck. So we are allowed how many by law? Uh, ten gaper clams. So yeah. it's a combination of either the fat gaper or the Pacific gaper clam. Okay. That's ten of those. Yeah. We're allowed ten butter clams. You're allowed twenty cockles or small, small. Manila clams. Yeah. They have to be an inch and a half minimum in size. Okay. And there is a gauge that they sell for that. Razor clams, you're allowed 20. Gooey ducks, you're allowed 3. That's wow. per person per day with a fishing rifle. Do these uh, clams have any natural predators? Yes. There are uh, moon snails. Moon snails, they're a, a delicacy. But the one thing you got to be careful about is you can break the siphon. Oh, so you don't want if to break it. too aggressive, yeah. yeah. If it hasn't been able to retract down all the way yet, you're just doing this. Well, that's a lot of work for for one clam, right? Yeah, hey. for one clam. So by the time you do your uh, limit for the day, it's a good workout today. Uh, so yes. Bicep, tricep, you know, back workout. <laughs> so this is gonna be one of those wow, bigger be ones. Wow, bigger ones, right? Really deep now. Okay, we're almost uh, arm length in, and voila. So this is actually one of the younger ones because the shell is not blackened up yet. But this is still a very good size. You know, clam. Once you this thing stretches out, it'll probably be about two feet long. Two feet long, okay. Typically less than five to seven years okay. when they're still this color. When they age, they turn uh, black, um, and that's how you know it's a more mature one. Oh. Yeah, but this is the digging foot. This is very fleshy. This is uh, edible. The yeah. siphon is the most prized part. And then there are two abductor muscles, uh, just like a scallop, but mm -hmm. there's two of them, uh, and those are pretty good too. First yep. one, first, first one, one of the day. All right, Tam, you said we put our hands into the grass, Water. sea grass, and, and feel. feel. What are we feeling for? Pacific gaper has a hard uh, mouth, right? This has a hard... It's uh, like a siphon. Si tip of the siphon. You can feel for them. There's a hole. Okay. Do you see, feel the uh, hole? Where, where, where am I touching? Right in the hole. And these are what, about, about 18 inches in? Okay. Or decent size one. 
Whoa, holy moly. See how the, the darker. <laughs> I'm surprised how big this guy is. Look at that. The darker shell. Now, this uh, method, this is a Pacific Gate. Pacific Gate. Horse Pacific. neck clam. Horse neck clam. Wow. Okay, got him. He's coming up. All right. Okay. That's also a very, very mature. Very nice size. This is Harry Sue's uh, first clam. That's a Pacific Gaper clam. So once you get one, it's gonna be a good day. One clam in the bag. Yep. Here we go. Okay, here we go. All right. Look at that. Woohoo! All right. So the contrast is this is the fat gaper. This is a Pacific gaper, right? And the right. one is more rounded. It's, it's a cross section here. Cross section. Cross section is more round. You see, like bulbous. It's this. It's this part here. Okay. See how it's rounded? Okay. This one's more elongated and it has a little. And then the, the siphon is hard here. This uh -huh. is soft. Yeah. Yes. Like, like kind of slimy, totally right? Totally different. All right, folks. Uh, I'm here with Tam, and he is the uh, clam whisperer. He really knows his way on how to get the clams. And uh, well, we've been doing it a couple hours now, and I got a limit of 20 clams here. So I'm gonna have pretty big we'll lay them out with the boat. Take a look at the uh, clam haul today. Quite a haul of the uh, gaper clams as well as the uh, butter clams and uh, some of them are pretty darn big. Look, look, at, look at this one here. See? Look at that. Let's get ready to process our California gaper clams and our butter clams. We have uh, some tools we need. We need a fillet knife, something flexible that you can uh, use to remove the meat from the shell. A pair of scissors is helpful, a little bowl of ice cold water to soak it, and a pot of boiling water to scald the uh, siphon, and a couple of trays for the meat that you're going to extract. Uh, also, wear an apron, always helpful because you will get wet doing this. A nice uh, cutting board with a towel on top will be a good place to start. Here's the Pacific Gaper Clam, aka Horse Neck Clam. It's uh, also called a Traces Nutali, and uh, it's similar to the gooey duck. The way this clam is held down is there's two muscles, the adductor, two muscles here, and then two muscles here. What you want to do is you can take your knife, a flexible boning knife like so, and then you run it at the bottom edge to cut off the muscle on the other bottom side, like so. And you want to preserve the addu adductor. Get a flexible knife like so, cut, cut it open. It's a nice big piece here, cut it open. Same on this side also, do the same thing, run your knife under here. Okay, open the shell, carefully get everything out. Okay, so just to recap, the, uh, the points are here, and here, and here, and here, okay? What you want to do is cut up the area where the siphon is. So, and we're going to have to blanch this in order to remove the hard uh, surface here. And I know for those of you out there, you're ready to crack the joke. So please, uh, you know, I have a G-rated channel. So let, let, let's keep the comments to something constructive. Foot here is right here. This is the part that's edible. So you want to cut open the foot about halfway down. This is the way the stomach is. You want to remove the viscera, stomach contents. So, get this thing out. Like so, Sco scoop the piece of pit, something, a blunt instrument. Get all the brown, brown guts out. So the bottom line is anything brown, let it go. Then see water. All right, so that's the foot. Clean the foot. Put it in a clean bowl here. Let's work on this one now. So we're trimming off any of the edible parts here. There's the adductor. Save this part here. here. Okay, on a good piece. And this is the other muscle in the back, the adductor or the scallop muscle. It's really good eating. Okay, that's the white parts are edible. And that's not edible. Let's show you how we uh, loosen up the uh, coating or the skin so that we can uh, kind of peel the uh, siphon. I have uh, some boiling water. We're going to dip it in for about 20 to 30 seconds. Like so that's the trick that will allow you to loosen up the outside so that uh, you can peel it off. The other trick you can do is you can actually freeze this also. And then after you freeze it, the outside skin comes off a lot easier. 
about 20 seconds like so okay, that's it you blanch it for 20 seconds that will loosen up the skin so we can peel it after you blanch them we show you guys how to peel it you want to cut off the siphon here first find your knife right down the middle so blanching it allows you to peel off the skin there are actually two holes in the siphon. One is to bring water and nutrients in, and then the other one is to eject the water and nutrients. And you have some beautiful clam meat. This is the siphon. So, ready to make into uh, various dishes, which I'm going to show you next. Let's work on the California butter clam next. It's also known as a Sexy donuts, Nutali, and uh, same type of process. You want to run your knife into the shell like so, and do this over a bowl because it's going to run. Whoa! Obviously, you want to do this before it closes up. So these are the attachment points right here. Here's the uh, scallop piece. Trim off the tip of the siphon, kind of mucusy part here. Knife using easy, easier using a knife. There's a seam on the back of the siphon. So just run your knife right down the middle of the seam, and you can see there's actually you can see there's actually two holes, one for incoming water and one for outgoing. Pulling away all the black parts, to saving the white clam meat. We're going to uh, try a few different recipes. Obviously with clams, you can make fried clams, make clam chowder, you can make a... I'm going to do a uh, clams casino in a half shell, which is a kind of a baked clam, very classic preparation. It's really good for chowder. And here's the foot. It's a much bigger foot than the uh, gaper clam. This is called the uh, Pacific... Uh, California butter clam and uh, also known as a Washington clam, also known as a uh, Saxidomus nutali. The other clam that you saw me trim earlier was the uh, Pacific gaper clam. The reason it's called a gaper clam is because uh, it's got such so much meat that the shell cannot really close, so it's kind of that's a that's a it gapes or that's a gap in it. That's why it's called a gaper clam. As I'm doing this, uh, I also want to kind of mention to you guys when you go clamming anywhere in like America, especially on the Pacific coast. Uh, you want to also watch out for any kind of a, uh, a toxic uh, biotoxin hotline. There's a hotline that tells you when it's safe to eat uh, shellfish because uh, shellfish is also prone to a condition caused by the algae blooms in the ocean. The algae blooms in the ocean and then it creates uh, some toxins and uh, depending on the time of the year or the season, some of these toxins is harmful to you, so you want to make sure you avoid it. So call the biotoxin hotline. I'll leave the number in my video description. It's uh, 1-800-553-4133 before you go and eat any shellfish because uh, you want to forage in uh, safety. The uh, algae blooms in the ocean sometimes cause a harmful natural poison. Uh, it's called domoic acid and uh, filter feeders such as uh, clams and shellfish, even anchovies and sardines, they eat it. And then the animals like the sea lions and the dolphins eat it and then they get sick. So uh, you want to make sure that you, when you go clamming, it's always, you know, more, all, almost all the time safe. But as a safety precaution, on the buttons of caution, when you go clamming, make sure you call the hotline number in the video description below just to double check to make sure that there's no problem during the months that you're gathering clams. Don't be surprised if you see a live pea crab inside your uh, gaper clam. These crabs have a symbiotic relationship and uh, a mating pair will enter the uh, gaper clam using the uh, siphon when the, the uh, clam is uh, still young. And uh, as the clam grows, the pair of uh, the pea crab will also grow. And uh, this pea crab was in one of my gaper clams. If you want to get the uh, skin sliminess off, you can just blanch it in some water for just uh, 20 seconds. Dump in some cold water. Stop the cooking. We start our clams casino recipe with browning some bacon. In 
to do our bacon grease, uh, we're going to melt uh, about three tablespoons of butter. Make our stuffing. Add about uh, two tablespoons of shallots. One tablespoon of garlic. And once the uh, garlic has uh, become translucent, you just want to saute the uh, butter clam. Cut up. Put some rub on it. You just want to cook the clams just a little before we make the uh, breadcrumb. We add some breadcrumbs and uh, some Parmesan cheese and a little bit of lemon zest. Just the taste of the ocean breadcrumbs. Turn the fire down. Add a little bit of clam broth that we saved. Add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. I've turned the fire off already. You just want to kind of fold it and uh, create a nice clams casino mixture. The cheese will help to hold the uh, stuffing together here. Clam stuffing. And you want to be careful not to overcook the clam. Smooth the cilantro, like a little bit of herb, Just add a little bit of mint. All right, we're ready to stuff the clam with this mixture. All right, let's lay the salt out. Let's put a pat of butter at the bottom. For flavor. Spoon out. lemon zest on it. Give it a little bit of color with some tomatoes. A touch of Parmesan cheese. There you have it. Uh, just ready to cook. Now nice thing about this is uh, once you make this, you can actually wrap it in a plastic wrap and then store in the refrigerator. Take it to your potluck. Take it to your campsite. Take it to your uh, pot party or tailgate and now uh, cook it in your pit and create a wonderful, wonderful appetizer for all your friends. Let's make the uh, Thai curry sauce. I'll show you guys a super easy way to make a super easy curry sauce. You're gonna use it with the uh, noodles, the vermicelli, and uh, we're gonna stuff the clam with a Thai style clam for the uh, gaper clams. We did the butter clams and a casino style clam casino for the uh, butter clam or the uh, California butter clam and for this one we're going to do a little bit of different recipe I'm just sauteing the bacon to get some fat we're going to make a quick super fast Thai curry we're going to use this product here uh, you can use a jar curry paste uh, this is the one that I like uh, it's about 99 cents from the store and you can find it in most uh, Asian markets if you don't want this one, you can use tom yum paste. You can use any pre-prepared Thai style sauce. I'm gonna put about one tablespoon of this uh, product in here. Add a little bit of garlic. Maybe one teaspoon of garlic just to give it a nice flavor. I like shallots, so about one big tablespoon of shallots. Push it under low heat, lower the heat a little bit, let it become fragrant. All that bacon fat with the Thai spice, so a little bit of east and west, and it's smelling absolutely amazing here. Add a little bit of chopped jalapenos because we want it spicy, about one tablespoon of chopped jalapeno. Because uh, this is a Thai spicy chili curry style, I'm going to add a little bit of a uh, saved chili. This came from a uh, uh, to-go. We had a Thai food and um, they gave us a little bit of dry, dry Thai chili. This is super hot, so you can substitute cayenne pepper if you like, uh, but having a, like authentic Thai chili is always going to be better. All right, we saute it in the oil, so you release the flavors. You can add a little bit of coconut cream to it. It's from Walmart. About three quarter cup of coconut cream and you can use uh, coconut milk also it doesn't matter I just found this convenient because it was the right size I didn't need a whole can of coconut milk so this will be, this will be fine so another fire simmer it and uh, we'll season this in a little bit once it's kind of simmers the uh, sauce is coming along fine I'm going to adjust the color uh, it does not as red as I wanted so I'm just gonna add a little bit of paprika kind of get it to a nice color so when you cook, you really have to kind of cook by feel. I'm going to add about uh, probably one half a teaspoon of paprika, kind of to 
tune the color to the color I want for the sauce. The curry sauce we're gonna put on top of the mung bean noodle of vermicelli and create a wonderful Thai style spicy stuffed clam, gaper clam in this case. Another half teaspoon or so. Okay, we're ready to season it now. I'm just gonna give it a touch of uh, some good old fish sauce. This gives it a fantastic umami flavor. And no, you're not going to taste the fish. Give one tea, just half a teaspoon. That's it, quite plenty. And uh, here's another money saving tip. Every time you go to the Thai restaurant and they give you condiments, this is a uh, jalapeno pickle in vinegar. So it's kind of like a pickling juice. So I'm gonna use some of that. Give me a little bit of acid in my dish. You can use just regular vinegar, but I had this sitting in the refrigerator. We don't want to waste. We use every bit of all the ingredients we have. That includes all the meats, all the trimmings. We never want to waste. Okay, I'll put a little bit of acid in it. Just a touch of ginger. Probably about maybe one teaspoon of garlic. Half a teaspoon of ginger. Just to get a nice aromatic flavor. To saute the clams before we stuff it with the curry sauce and the uh, mung bean noodles, vermicelli. Vermicelli, Thai, spicy, baked clam or smoked clam. I'm going to smoke it in a bit. This is our gaper clam meat. Slice. Maybe a slip of daddy rub. Add a little bit of Thai chili. If you're not, you can use cayenne. Just a touch for flavor. Add some of that Thai sauce back here. A little bit of bacon left over from making the uh, casino clam. Use some of the bacon. The rest of the uh, jalapenos. This is not bell pepper, this is jalapeno. So it's gonna be super spicy. I like a hint of uh, herb. I'm gonna put some mint. And turn this off. And we have a wonderful, wonderful clam mixture here. We're gonna dress up the clams with it. This is a mung bean noodle. I, I got this from uh, Walmart. And uh, it's a kind of a noodle that once you rehydrate with water, hot water, it has a nice uh, kind of a fluffy consistency. We're going to use this as a base for our clam. We're going to add a little bit of the uh, sauce to it first. I put some of the mung bean noodle into the uh, sauce we made. All right, as before, we're going to add a, just a touch of citrus on it. We're going to add some lemon zest. With a nice brightness. So cooking is about understanding how to layer flavors. As I mentioned to you, I'm a, like an MMA cook. I have no formal training, but when I cook, I like to mix in complex flavors. So we did a uh, kind of a clam casino, and we did a, a Thai style kind of a on the fly, using some of the best ingredients I like, such as the mung bean noodles and uh, a little bit of Thai spice. Sorry for a bit of color. Just add a bit of tomatoes. So these two dishes may look alike, but the flavors are absolutely completely different. Um, we can add a little binder. So I'm using the Parmesan cheese as a binder to kind of hold the dish together. Just a, just a little bit. Parmesan will give it a nice flavor. Top it with a little bit of breadcrumbs on top. And get a nice crunch. So a little bit of a East meets West. And this is from uh, Walmart. This is every I bought. I went and made one trip to Walmart and made this dish. Just a touch of love rub on it. Since this is a spicy dish, this is the... Uh, Dry Thai chili. All right, let's go find a pit that's about 450 degrees and get this puppy going. So we have our clams casino and we have our Thai style mung noodle vermicelli clam. This one is done with gaper, horse neck clam. And uh, this is done with the butter clam, the Washington clam. All both could be absolutely amazing. It took about uh, 25 minutes in the 400 degree pit to get it to the temperature of about 165, 175. Uh, this is, uh, allows the cheese to melt. I'm going to try the gaper clam first, uh, which is this one here with the Thai noodles, curry sauce with the uh, vermicelli. I need to get some lemon on this thing here. Be careful not to burn myself, it's super hot. So the reason we put it on a bit of uh, salt is to allow the uh, shell to sit properly without toppling over. So here's how it looks like. 
Super good. Really good. It um, reminds me of being in Thailand where you had that wonderful flavor of Thai flavors like lemongrass, galangang, ginger. In case you notice that I didn't have to do any of the hard work, I just bought a jar of a Thai style curry sauce for like 99 cents. And uh, we just add a few other ingredients which I showed you to create a wonderful Thai inspired baked clam. So this is the uh, gape, gaper clam. See the noodle has soaked up all the flavor. It's clam and there's bits of clam in there also. Mm -mm -mm. It's almost like a Thai style vongole with uh, like a spaghetti, but in this case, is a mung bean noodle. This is so good, I, I have to have a third bite. Super complex flavor, a little bit of the citrus from the tamarind, the richness of the coconut milk in here, and then these uh, spices are really spicy, very exotic flavor, just a great way to enjoy your gaper clam. Absolutely amazing. Good. Now, moving on to the next one, we're gonna try the um, Casino Royale. So the Casino Royale is uh, kind of like a breadcrumbs uh, top with some cheese, lemon zest on a clam. So just here's how it looks like. Looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, give it a shot here. I put it down. It's burning my hand. It's hot. It's kind of like a kind of like a stuffing. It's got that bacon in it, and uh, clam has been mixed with all the flavors of the uh, breadcrumbs. Wow, that tastes really good. Kind of like a <laughs> kind of like a clam stuffing uh, for Thanksgiving, but this is really really good. It's just kind of an outstanding dish on its own. We have a second bite here. Just the bacon, seasoned breadcrumbs. So all we did was uh, we sauteed some uh, butter, shallots, garlic, and then we kind of like kind of cooked the clam a little bit to render the juices. And we used the clam juice and then the butter, melted butter, and the bacon fat to kind of stir in the breadcrumbs to give the great breadcrumbs some great flavor. Added some slappy daddy rub and then put the clams back in and then baked it in the uh, smoke fire for about uh, 25 minutes to about 175, 170 degrees. It's really, really, really delicious. You know, super moist and juicy. Mm -mm -mm. Really, really good. So, not that hard to do. You saw me do two pit baked clam dishes. This one's the inspired by Thai, Thailand, spicy, complex curry flavors. This one is a kind of Casino Royal, traditional breadcrumbs, bacon, butter, shallots, and uh, uh, with the clam, lots and lots of flavor. This is just so good. I'm gonna have another bite. Sorry guys, but you know, this is really, really tasty. I'm trying to shoot and uh, tell you guys how it tastes, but you know, it's really so good. I have to have another bite. Really, really still very moist and very tender. Not rubbery at all. All right, so much for me talking. Mr. Beans and Brisket Dog is waiting for his turn. So let me give him a small serve sample of the gaper clam and then the uh, butter clam. See if he likes seafood. All right, Beans. Okay, here we go. All right, a little bit of a tie on the left and a little bit of a casino clam on the right. And uh, let's give Mr. Beans a shot here. All right, Mr. Beans, no brisket today, okay? So we're gonna serve you something from the ocean. All right, Beans, we're gonna have you try some clam today, All right? Okay, go. Okay, he's going for the casino clam. Thai clam, and he seems to enjoy it. So no brisket today, Beans, but I guess uh, some clam action for you. Thanks for stopping by, checking out my video. I want to do a shout out to my Patreon subscribers for supporting my channel and allowing me to bring you original new content. We had about 300 videos and heading to probably 500 plus videos, uh, non-repeating. So if you like what I do, uh, please consider patreon.com Harry Sue. Thanks a lot for stopping by. We will see you next time.